The goal of this video lecture is to provide a brief overview of the cognitive approach to psychopathology, including the way that this approach conceptualizes mental illnesses, some of the key concepts for understanding this approach, and the kinds of interventions that are emphasized by this approach. According to the cognitive approach, psychopathology is viewed as resulting from maladaptive thought processes, or patterns in the ways that people think about events that they experience. One way of understanding the cognitive approach is to think about the ABCs of behavior. So when we're thinking about the ABCs of behavior, we're thinking about the relationship between events that people experience and the way that they feel about those events and the behaviors that they engage in in response to those events. And we're thinking about the beliefs that people have as an important step in that process. So in the ABCs of behavior, we start with an activating event. This is sometimes called the antecedent. So this might be something like getting back a poor exam grade. And often we think of the relationship between experiences and feelings in terms of experiences causing our feelings. So you might think someone who gets back an exam with a bad grade will feel sad. But there's an important process that occurs in between these activating events and people's feelings. And that important process has to do with how people think about those experiences. So according to the cognitive approach, the consequences of an activating event, the emotions that a person experiences, and also the behaviors that they engage in in response to those events are determined by the beliefs that they have or the way that they think about that event. So for example, if you think about someone who gets back a poor exam grade, if they think this test was really unfair and this teacher is a really bad teacher, instead of feeling sad, they might feel angry. Or they might have a belief that they didn't study enough for that exam and that they need to change their behavior so that they can get a better grade on a future exam. So in that case, their feeling might be a little bit of regret that they hadn't done something differently before, but they might also feel hopeful that they'll be able to perform better on the next exam. So according to the cognitive approach, patterns of maladaptive beliefs can lead people to experience psychopathology when these patterns are associated with specific kinds of emotional responses. And there are a wide range of ways in which people can have maladaptive patterns in their thinking. So for example, people can engage in black and white thinking, where when they interpret events, they see them as tending to be all good or all bad. Uh, people can engage in catastrophizing or magnification when they think about potential bad things that might occur um, and always thinking about the worst case scenario. And all of these different patterns of thinking styles can be associated with different symptoms. So for example, people who tend to engage in all or none thinking may experience higher levels of depression because if they experience an event that has some bad elements, they may see that as all bad. Or if they feel bad about one part of themselves, they may start to see themselves as a bad person overall and this way of thinking about things could lead them to feel sad and down about the world and about themselves. Catastrophizing, we know, is associated with anxiety disorders. So people who tend to think about the worst case scenario and focus on highly negative things that could happen are much more likely to experience high levels of anxiety. So these different patterns of maladaptive ways of thinking are related to the development of symptoms of mental illness. From a cognitive approach, our cognitive interventions, particularly cognitive therapy, are going to focus on addressing these problematic patterns of thinking. So the goals of cognitive therapy are to help people understand the relationship between their thoughts and their feelings, to help them identify their specific patterns of cognitive biases, and then to help them challenge their distorted or maladaptive thought patterns and replace those with more adaptive and more realistic ways of thinking about the world. As an example, this is something called an automatic thought record, which is a common tool used in cognitive therapy, which is a way of helping people go through the process of identifying their ABCs of behavior. So this is a thought record completed by an individual who has a high level of symptoms of anxiety. 
and they've described a situation where they feel anxious. So they're walking home from work. They reported that they felt highly anxious, a little bit lonely, and pretty scared. And then they identified their automatic thoughts. So their thoughts are that something awful is going to happen and that they can't cope. So here you can see an example of some potential catastrophizing, that they're walking back and think something really bad is going to happen. So in this case, the therapist is helping them identify some potential problems with their thought pattern. So they're identifying evidence that supports their automatic thoughts, but they're also identifying evidence that their automatic thought pattern might not be very realistic. And then after going through this process, they come up with an alternative, more realistic thought. And as a result of going through this process, they now feel less anxious and less scared. So cognitive interventions are designed to reduce the symptoms that people experience by helping them identify the problematic patterns in the ways that they tend to think about events and helping them develop more adaptive ways of thinking about things that can help address the emotional and behavioral symptoms that they're experiencing.